With each new release of Dreamweaver, Adobe continues to improve and enhance Dreamweaver's Spry integration. Spry is Adobe's AJAX framework and can add rich user interactivity into your files by combining HTML, XML, JavaScript, and CSS together. Thanks to Dreamweaver's Spry integration, you don't need to be an expert at JavaScript to add AJAX functionality to your pages. We'll take a closer look at Spry widget functionality by creating a tooltip widget and then review some form validation widgets to examine their functionality. So here we have our register.html page open. And I'm going to scroll down because we have a link here that says what's check mobile. And we want to give people more information about the check mobile site, but we don't necessarily want to navigate them to another page. So this is a perfect candidate for a tooltip. So we've highlighted the link so that it can act as a trigger for our spry tooltip. Then we're going to go up to the insert panel, find our spry objects, and we'll insert a tooltip widget on the page. Now, really, that's all we need to do. If I scroll down, I can see that we have a little placeholder content that says Spry Tooltip Content goes here. So all we would need to do now is replace this content with whatever we really want to show in our tooltip. Now, I've already got that content saved to the page, and to make it a little easier, I'm just going to copy and paste it. And I'll do that in Code View to make life a little bit easier on me. So I'll go ahead and delete the existing placeholder content. I'll highlight the content I want to place in my tooltip, and I'll just move it there. So you could type this in yourself, or you could do what I've done here and copy and paste it if you already had the tooltip content on the page. Now, when I save the file, I'm prompted by Dreamweaver, and it needs to save an external JavaScript and an external CSS file that are going to control my tooltip. So as you begin to add these spry widgets to your page, it's going to start adding these files to your site. It adds them in a folder called spry assets, and you need to make sure that you upload those folders to your remote website so that your functionality works. So if I go back into Design View, I can see here is now my Spry tooltip. Now, if I were to preview this right now, it would not look exactly the way I want it to. The text isn't formatted, it has a yellow background, there's no fixed width. So I can control the look and feel of my tooltip by modifying the CSS that drives it. So I'm going to go into my Code View. So in Code View, I'm going to highlight a selector that I have commented out. I'm going to uncomment that. And that's going to overwrite the external style driving my tooltip content and it should change the formatting of my own. So if I scroll down now, yeah, I can see the formatting looks a lot better. So if the external cascading style sheet drives the look and feel of my tooltip widget, the external JavaScript file drives the functionality. Now, as I mentioned before, you don't have to be a JavaScript wizard to modify the functionality of your widgets. Notice that by clicking inside of my tooltip widget, I see this little tab show up. And if I click on that, my properties inspector now reflects the properties of my tooltip widget. And here I can change how it behaves. This will in turn go out and edit my external JavaScript file. So I'm going to give it a horizontal offset of negative 100. That'll move it to the left by 100 pixels when somebody hovers over my tooltip. I could give it a hide delay. So for example, I could give it a hide delay of 500. And that would make it pause for half a second before it disappeared. I could also apply an effect such as a fade effect so that the tooltip fades in and out as it appears and disappears. And I can choose the hide on mouse out option so that when I mouse off of the tooltip, it goes away. So I'll save, I'll do a save all. That'll save not only my page, but the external JavaScript and CSS files that are driving this. And I'll preview this in my browser. Now when I hover over check mobile, here's my tooltip widget. Notice that it has a nice fade in, fade out, and a little bit of delay on the fade out. Perfect. That's exactly what we were looking for. Well, next, let's examine some of Spry's form validation widgets that have already been placed on the page. Using Dreamweaver's validation widgets, you can create complex client-side form validation without having to have extensive JavaScript experience as well. So if I scroll down in my browser and I click to submit my form, you'll notice that I'm getting a good bit of feedback from my form. Well, every place that I'm getting feedback is using a form validation widget. So we have rich client-side form validation occurring here. If I click in username, for example, I can begin to type, choose a username. And if I click inside my password, notice that this interactivity can give the user more information about filling out the form properly. So here it's telling me that four to 10 characters are required. And when I go into my confirm password, I get the same kind of feedback. Notice that you can have complex client side form validation, even on radio buttons, so that your radio buttons can give feedback to your user as they're filling out the form as well. So for each of these validation widgets you use, you'll have similar parameters to change. And keep in mind that just like the tooltip widget, you can use the CSS and the properties inspector to customize the spry widgets to your specific needs. 
I hope it's given you a window into how Dreamweaver and Spry can efficiently add powerful, rich user interface elements to your page, even for individuals who are not experts at JavaScript.